Okay, so we're going to make uh, a Cornish reed. Uh, the reason I'm doing that is it's the last largest one I do and it it's going to be easier to demonstrate. And uh, the base of, of it is a tube, the staple, which is tapered and you have to be consistent about the taper. So you have a mandrel which is a bit like a screwdriver, a chunkier screwdriver, which just fits inside there. And I'll show you <coughs> later how to, how to use it. But to make it, it has to be consistent on both sides. And the rather nifty way I worked out, this is a smaller diameter, this would be for a D1, is get a file, <coughs> get uh, the length of silver steel or whatever that will fit inside your staple. File a flat on the back so it's always consistently in the same place. Tighten it up on this tap um, holder and then you can sh sharpen that side. Blacken this first with um, felt tip pen and then on this side as well. And because you've got a felt tip pen mark, you're going to be able to see how far, how each side is equal so that the profile on either side will be equal. I'm putting a lot of the measurements and angles on a sheet on my website, so you'll see the link at the bottom of this video. Now cutting your staple, you can do it with a hacksaw if you want to, a mini hacksaw, as long as you um, make sure there aren't rough edges on it, but it's far, far quicker to do it on a lathe. And I've made this little uh, <coughs> length gauge so that I know for the Cornish, two and a half inches long, I can mark with a pencil or something. And then with a tool, which uh, you can see it's just a little triangular sharp tool, It'll snap off. It will. Then <coughs> after that you need to remove the burr that you've created there. That's not a good edge there. So uh, just reverse and with the side of this. Hey presto you've got a tube two and a half inches long. Exactly what you want. Okay, so now <coughs> it needs flattening, taper put on it, and um, don't do this at home. I always do it. I shouldn't be using my lathe as an anvil, so the mandrel just comes to the end there, and uh, I shouldn't be doing this. So don't do this at home. Just make sure it's. So there you go, you've got a staple. Now there's something I've started doing recently is actually just roughening the outside to increase the friction when I actually put the plastic on. Don't know whether it helps, but I've started doing it. There you go, you've got a staple. Okay, now we get to the plastic. What plastic should you use? If someone, if you were starting now, I would suggest you use Mylar, M-Y-L-A-R. You can get it on uh, eBay and it comes in sheet form and it's very consistent thickness and a lot of pipe makers are using it. And what you do is you get something yogurt pot sized, preferably metal I would imagine, and then wrap it round uh, <coughs> with some kind of binding and then pour hot water on. I don't know the details, I've never done it, but I know John and, Sean Jones and people use it and it seems a very good, uh, <coughs> very consistent way of doing it. I've always used yoghurt pots. I've got 1400 of these yoghurt pots so that's what I'm going to use. I used to cut them down with scissors and that makes a lot of sense if you're making a small quantity but if you're making a lot of reeds it makes more sense to do it <coughs> on the lathe. Just with a standing knife cut in there, cut in there, 
Hey presto, you've got it cut. One thing I do find very handy if you're doing it in quantities is just doing some lines along there. It helps you when you're lining up the pieces, <coughs> uh, when you're lining up for making the reeds because you're not dealing with <coughs> something that is absolutely cylindrical, it's conical. So there you are, that's how you do it. And you don't smudge your fingers on the ink. Okay, now I'm going to show you the principle of my reed sander. I'm not going to show you the sander itself yet because it's so sophisticated. It might be blinding, uh, <coughs> blinding you with information. Basically, we've got this piece of plastic. So the task is to get it smoothly, a smooth angle from, from there. The thickness may be variable, but usually I'm starting at about 16 thou and you want to get down to 8 thou there, so with even contours all the way, so when you actually cut out the, uh, the blank, that will be tapered smoothly. And the system that Tony used was having a, a flat base and these two parallel to the base, and some sandpaper there for sanding the, the reed, and <coughs> that fits on that. So when I'm moving that backwards and forwards, it's complete, it's totally parallel with the base. Then he made this clever uh, <coughs> idea of actually holding the plastic flat, because at the moment that's always one part of the problem. So you want the plastic uh, curve for making the reed, but also when you're sanding it, you want it to be flat. So he, he flattened the, uh, flattened he clamped it in under there and then there's a device for raising it so that when you are sanding and you're pushing down you are sanding and as you're sanding you start sanding more there and slowly move back as the contours move back and hopefully arrive at a place where it's about 16 thou there and about 8 thou there. So that's what you do. He also had another clever device, well my machine has a clever device, that it can be lifted up and down and maintain the same angle. 